Hello there, I'm Leandra from Paper Artsy. In this video I'm going to show you how to apply texture to tags, actually we'll be doing it to wood as well, um, with Ferro Texture Paste so that you can create much more interesting and textured backgrounds um, using your paints on top. We'll actually show you how to achieve the paint effects in a separate video. This video is all about how to get the texture onto the surface. So the things you're going to need to do this are a stencil. This stencil is a very simple stencil. It's available online in our shop. You'll need some Ferro Texture Paste, which is a product from Viva Decor. You're going to need a palette knife. Um, I just use, it doesn't really matter, any of these are appropriate. So a palette knife, again, these are available online. Uh, you'll need a heat tool and of course your substrate. Now I'm going to be using this little, um, it's like a, a little wooden gift box. They come in a set of three and uh, there are various sizes. So um, you, you can, this is the smallest of the three. I've just taken the little handle off so that I've got a nice flat surface to work on. You can also do it directly onto tags. So it's quite straightforward. You're going to put your stencil on there and then get some of the ferro. And it's a bit like icing a cake, really. You just lay it over there as much or as little as you want. So I'm going to work my way up the sides. Now this ferro is designed to be have a metallic finish, that's why it's got all the sparkle in it. And it really isn't, I don't think that the manufacturer intended that you paint over it, I kind of think they thought you would just put it directly onto an item to get a vintage metallic effect. But we like to add lots of other bits and pieces on top, so you don't have to. Now you'll notice that I'm not really scraping off the excess, I'm really layering it on quite thickly. There we go, I think that's probably enough. And I'm just going to lift that straight off. Okay, so we get quite um, an interesting effect on there. You could leave that just like that and dry it. But uh, what I'm going to, oh, I'm going to heat that in a minute, but first I've got a little tip of what to do with the excess. Because we've got quite a lot still on that, you can just use it again onto another tag. And you can actually repeat this probably three or four times depending on how much of the, of the paste you've applied in the first place. See, there's another one. Put that to one side. And we might even get a third. It just saves you returning it to the pot. If you, and also, if you're doing a bit of a production line of this kind of thing, then anything like that makes it a bit faster. I think I wobbled that one a bit. Oh no, it's not too bad. Okay, so you don't have to be, you can see I'm not really perfect about how I do it because it's going to change anyway when we apply heat. And um, when you get the paint over the top, any little imperfections are really not visible. So the next step is to heat this. Now ferro is not supposed to be heated. It's um, just supposed to be left to dry naturally and in a warm room I'm imagining probably it seems to be about 15 minutes for it to dry. But if you apply heat it actually blisters the product and on this stencil or stencils that are a brocade type pattern or a swirl or a flourish then the texture of the product actually starts to puff up and blister and that gives you a really nice rounded effect. Can you see that starting to happen there down that bottom corner? So it literally puffs up and rounds out.
Now the great thing is that it does hold its form. You'd kind of expect that it would flop back down and go flat. Or if you touch it, that it would collapse, but it doesn't. So I love this because it gives a really nice dimension. Okay, so there you have it, we're done. You've got a nice textured pattern ready for painting.